So a couple of weeks ago, I released a tutorial on using filter everything. And within that video, we took a look at how we could use this free plugin to start filtering our WooCommerce products. Well, obviously, questions came up about can we use this with advanced custom fields and those kinds of tools. And the answer is yes, you can. So to help answer those questions and demonstrate how to get started using filter everything, we're going to take a look at doing that today with this particular website that I'm working on. This is a basic listing website using various different tools, ACF being one of those. So let me just quickly demonstrate what we're going to create and then I'll show you step by step how to use filter everything to do just that. Okay, so let's hop over onto the site itself. So this is one of the pages inside there. And as you can see, it's a typical looking listing website. We've got various different properties in various different categories, price ranges. Each of these has different things like some custom fields associated with it, like a price, a location, and also a category. So these are custom post types with custom taxonomies and ACF meta fields associated with them. So if we take a look on the left hand side, we've now got a search or filter set. This gives us control over the property type, which is our custom taxonomy. We've also got the price range, which is a custom meta field. And we've got the location, which again is a custom meta field inside ACF. And as you can see, if we just go through and select something like apartment, it will filter that down and only show us apartments. We then got the location, which filters down and also the price range. So we can refine this by using the simple slider. Now we have our final property available. So all of this is done using the free version of filter everything. So now we've seen what we're going to do. Let's hop over into the dashboard and take a look at how we can recreate this filter for ourselves. Now, once you're inside the dashboard, what we're going to do is go ahead, install the plugin, which I've already done. We're going to come over then to the new option for filters. And inside filters, you've got a couple of different things. We've got filter sets, which is just a group of multiple filters, like I've just demonstrated, all grouped together. You've got add new, which allows us to create new filter sets. And finally, we have the settings option. So let's quickly just take a look at the settings to see how I've got things set up. Now, if we take a look, you can see we've got some basic options inside here. There's not a lot to worry about. To be honest, it's all pretty simple and straightforward in the free version. So this is what I've got. We're going to leave these things set up as they are. If you create URL variables, which is basically how your filter works, you'll see they'll all be listed inside here. And you can see I've got a couple already created. So it's going to reference these as we go through and create things. But don't worry about this. The process is automatic in the background. We're not going to worry about experimental or take a look at the pro version in this example. OK, so once we've done that, let's go ahead and add a new filter set. So once we've done that, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and give this a name. So we'll name this. We'll just call it filter sample and underneath there we can see we've got the option now to start creating our filters and where we actually want to use these what we want to filter now at the moment you see the post type to filter is set to posts we can expand this out and inside there you can see we've got the normal wordpress features like posts pages and so on we've also got custom post types in this example properties so we're going to choose properties for this example so now we're associating this filter set with the properties now we can go ahead and create the actual filters themselves. So let's go ahead and add our first filter in. Now when we do that, we get some basic options, the label, the filter by, the URL, the variable, and finally, how we want to view the actual widget itself. In other words, what kind of filter widget do we want to use? So let's give this the first option. We're going to call this location. We can choose then what we want to filter by. So you can see we've got various different options. Some of these are only available in the pro version. Some of these are based upon the option we choose at the top for the post filter type. So for this example, we're going to choose the option for custom field, which is one of our advanced custom fields, meta fields. We're going to say we're going to select that. And now we need to pull in the meta key, the unique key for that specific field. Now, if you don't know what they are, when you create your custom fields, you'll basically have a name. And that name is effectively the meta field. So all we need to do is copy this from there. We'll just copy it. We'll hop back over and we'll just go into the meta key field and we'll simply paste that inside there. You can see that automatically pulls in the variable name if you've created this and associated with any of these custom posts or any of these meta fields previously. So you can see location has been pulled in. However, if you haven't, don't worry. You can just fill this out with whatever you want. Make sure it's unique. Make sure you don't use spaces. As you can see, it tells you it supports A through to Z, zero to nine, the underscore and the minus sign or the period, the dash sign. So make sure you fit into those restrictions. So we'll leave location. That's perfectly fine. 
Then we can choose how we want to view this widget. And we've got checkbox, radio buttons, labels, and drop downs. These are specific to the types of fields that you're working with. So if you're dealing with numeric, then you'll have things like a range. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. For this example though, checkboxes is perfectly fine because someone might be filtering and want more than one location in their filter. So we'll leave that set as checkboxes. And that's all we really need to fill out. However, if we take a look, we also have more options. And these will be specific based upon the actual filter type. So you can see this gives us some additional options if we want to fine tune this just a little bit more. So we've got the filter logic, we can choose between or and and. This is basically how you want each of these individual filters to interact with each other. We're gonna leave this set to or, that's perfectly fine. You can see we've got sort terms by and we can choose to sort the terms inside this list in various different ways. Again, we'll leave this set to term name, that kind of makes the most sense, so it'll be alphabetical. You can exclude specific terms if you don't want those to be included in your filter, and you can see this pulls up all of the locations in this example, so I could easily go in and say, I don't want Edinburgh to be included in this, and therefore now that's been taken out. Simple as that, really easy to work with. Let's remove that from there, and we'll leave all the terms available. You've got folding, which basically means you can collapse this down. So if you have a really long list of, in this example, again, locations, you may want to compact this down a little bit to make it a bit more manageable and then allow people to expand this out to see more. There's the option for folding if you want to use it. You can just check that to enable it. Show selected, this shows the filter selected terms, the list of all chosen items. We're just gonna leave that as it is the default. And you can say, is this a search field? We're gonna add a search field in there. So if someone want to manually type something in, they could do that. We'll leave that as it is. And if you want to drop in a tooltip to help people out to know exactly what this is for, you could drop that inside there and that will appear on hover. So we'll say we're happy with all those options. We'll close that down and we'll go ahead now and add our second filter. So let's add another filter in. This time we're gonna call this price property. I'm just putting that in there because I wanna make sure this is kind of unique. Again, we're gonna change this now to a custom field, but we're gonna choose custom field number or num as it's called inside you because it's a numeric field. We've set that up as a numeric field, therefore it gives us different options and we want to base this upon the numbers. Meta key field, so again, we're gonna just hop back over. We're gonna grab the property price from there. We'll just copy that and we'll head back over and we'll paste that inside there. Now, because I've used this before, you can see this automatically pulls in that variable. And again, that's perfectly fine. If there's nothing in there, put whatever you want inside there. Just make sure it, you kind of make it unique. And then you can see we've got view in widget and we've got this and only range is available because this is a numeric value. Let's open up those more options. And again, you can see now we've got different options inside here because we're using a different kind of widget. So again, we've got those show selected, enable the range slider, which I think is a nice way of doing things. You can set the steps. Now, because we're dealing with maybe tens or hundreds of thousands when it comes to properties, it makes sense to put a nice large separator in there. So we're gonna let this go in 10,000 units. Again, you've got the search field, and the tooltip options, should you want them. Let's close this down and let's add a third and final option inside you. So this time we're just gonna choose property type. We're gonna set the filter by, and we're gonna choose property types, which is a custom taxonomy. So we'll choose that option inside there, and again, you see the variable names we pulled in. We can choose how we want to display this, and if we want to, we can also come into the more options, and again, all those same options are available inside there. So once we've done this and we've set everything up, you can see we can basically just leave everything else as it is. Most of these other options are pro only options anyway, and we're not using the pro version. So we're gonna say publish this, and we've now created our filter. Now, how do we go about inserting this? Now this depends upon what kind of system you're using. For this example, I'm simply using the Bloxy theme. This is the pro version, but you could do this in the free version as well because we're simply going to be using a built-in option for one of the sidebars and we can just link that through to the built-in feature that's in WordPress. So all we need to do is simply hop over into Appearance and into Widgets and inside there you can see we've got sidebars. Now I've got the pro version of Bloxy installed which allows me to create multiple sidebars. However, in the free version you will only have one which will be your main sidebar. So this would then apply to everything. However, like I say, I've created one that's specific to working with my custom post type. So what I can do is I can easily just get rid of what's inside there right now. So we'll remove that current filter. So once you've removed that, you can go ahead and add our new filter in. So all we need to do is click on add block. We're gonna search for filter. And you see there's our filter everything filters. 
Now you may be wondering why we don't get any option to choose what filter set we want to use. Well, because we've created a filter set and associated it with our custom post type, it knows what it's linked to. So when we created this sidebar or when we use this sidebar, it knows what filter set to use. So with that being said, we can simply update this. And once we've updated it, we can then go ahead and take a look at this on the front end of the site to make sure everything is working. So let's hop over into our properties, refresh this. Okay, so now there's our filter set. And as you can see, everything is set up as it was in the original example, our property type, our price range, and our locations. So if we just wanna base this upon price, we can simply just adjust the slider. And you can see that now updates and filters through for all the properties that fit inside that price bracket. It also filters things down and also removes any areas that don't fit into the filter we've just created. So you can see when we look at the location, if we put this back up to full, we've got more locations inside there. When we adjust the pricing on here, you can see that refines based upon no properties being available inside that price range. So now we can say we only wanted properties in that price range and we're interested in Bristol. We can select that and you can see there's our two properties. They're both apartments, but if we had apartments and houses and flats and those kinds of things, we could filter or subfilter things down even further. Now, if we take a look at the address bar, you can see this gives us a full URL link. And this is using various different bits of information where we've created this filter set. So you can see there's our location, our property price, all those being prepended by max because we're working on a max or a minimum value, but it's using those variables that are created or we create when we create our filter. And the nice thing with this is you can easily share this entire link with someone and it will filter things out based upon that link. You could use Ajax if you wanted to, and there's nothing wrong with using Ajax, and you do have that option. So we come back inside here, and we go into our filters and into settings. Inside our settings, you can see we've got Ajax for filters, and it says try to use Ajax. Now you can use this if you want to, and you may need to use the CSS ID or class of the container that's being associated with Ajax, because it works slightly differently. But for me personally, I prefer this non-Ajax version because it does make these links shareable, a bit more useful. Well, that's basically how we can go about using filter everything alongside advanced custom fields and custom post types to create more advanced filters with the free version of filter everything. Hopefully you found this useful. If you wanna check out the original video on using this with WooCommerce, you can check out this link right now. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.